So you are using JWTs in your application, and while JSON Web Tokens are amazing, they can be made even better and more secure with Refresh Tokens. They allow the user to not have to constantly sign in, needing a new token every single time, as well as they protect against bad people getting your token and having access forever. So how do we add Refresh Tokens to our .NET API, and what are they? Well, let's go ahead and dive into the project. So just quickly, I want to walk you guys through the project that we are using. If you've been following along with my JWT authentication and authorization playlist, then this video is going to slide in right along. And if you haven't, well, there should be a link up at the top uh, to go check out the other videos in this that go over JWT and everything else that's come before this when it comes to roles, policies, etc. Um, but that's the project we're going to be using. And if you want to just focus on refresh tokens, well, this is still the video for you. The last video in this series, we had changed our JWT from being stored in local storage to be stored in an HTTP only cookie. As you can see right here, we are now getting the token from the cookie. And if we go here, we are now storing it uh, in a cookie right here. So now that we have that, let me show you guys again. We just have a login, login with Google, register, and this get color list is the only kind of method that we then go in and check. Oh, are we authorized? And basically, it's just a demo method to make sure that we can sign in and get a correct JWT and everything like that. And then everything else is just logging in, registering basic things and everything that has to do with a JWT. And just to point this out, I'm not, again, using a database with this project. I'm just using a list of users. And that is what I'm doing whenever I'm registering, logging in, blah, blah, blah. I'm checking that instead of going to go check a database. So that is the API that we have. But now let's move on to refresh tokens and how they can work with JSON Web Tokens and what are refresh tokens. So let's move on to that. So what are refresh tokens? A refresh token is a special token that is used to obtain access tokens, and in our case, JSON Web Tokens. This allows your JWTs to not need to have super long expiration dates in case that one does get compromised. And if it does get compromised, that bad actor does not have access for very long to all your resources. In the case it never gets compromised, a valid refresh token is then tied to a user, which allows them to be issued a new JWT without needing the user to constantly sign in again and again and again. Like if you think about most modern web apps like Twitter or a Facebook, you sign in once and then it takes ages before you have to sign in again, right? Well, that's because of refresh tokens. This access token is your ticket to continue to get more and more JWTs. But once you do cash in this refresh token for a new JWT, you should also get a new refresh token tied to a given user. And in my example, like I just said a little bit ago, I will not be using a database, but maybe in your real world application, you might want to have a refresh tokens table since maybe a user could have multiple different tokens for access to certain things. And with all that out of the way, let's now dive into the actual code to add refresh tokens, pair them up with the HTTP only cookies and JWT within a .NET API. Okay, so now let's begin actually working in the refresh tokens to our API. So we will have a front end for this project. It is just going to be a basic login form with login with Google. If you've seen some of the other previous videos, you know, don't worry too much about the front end. This is not a front end focused video, but we will have a sort of login and log out so that we can actually kind of uh, show kind of the cookies and how they're moving around coming in from the server side. So back to the project, let's start adding in our code. So first things first, we will have one new model. So go to your models folder, right click and add a new model called refresh token. So once you've created your new model, we are just going to add in the fields that this is going to have. It is going to have a string token, then date time created, and another date time that is going to be called expires. And that is going to be our refresh token model. And then when coming to our program, if you haven't watched some of the other videos, just make sure that you have this. You obviously want to have that we're using cookies because we are using HTTP only cookies and JWTs, obviously for authentication. And then make sure that you are checking whenever you receive a request. Uh, that we are extracting the token from the cookie. The only thing that's going to change is here is we're going to change the name of our token going forward, but we will do that in a second. So now back to the important controller, the auth controller, where the majority, if not almost all of our changes are going to happen. So back at our login method, as you can see, we just get the user. We check is the user here. Uh, we check the passwords and then we let the person in. And we have this JWT generator method, which is where we basically right now are creating our JWT token and then injecting it into our HTTP only cookie. So that is what's happening here, basically when you are trying to log in. So first thing, I'm just gonna move this out right now, just to make it a little bit more readable. I'm just gonna move this out here. We're gonna leave this method here, but everything is fine because essentially all that's happening in here is we're just setting the cookie with our JWT. But now the next method that we actually are gonna need is we're actually gonna create a method for generating our refresh token. And our method for generating refresh tokens will look as follows. 
it's going to be returning a refresh token. It's kind of called generate refresh token. We're going to create a new refresh token based on the model that we just created, right? This one right here. We're going to set the token to just a randomly generated string. This does not need to be a JWT. It just has to be some sort of custom string that will change as you create new tokens. Our expiration date can be whatever you want, but obviously you'd want it to be a longer period of time since you do use the refresh token to get JWTs and then created, you want to set this as datetime.now. So the next method that we're going to be adding is going to be called the refresh token method. So what happens in this method? This method is going to be called whenever we have a JWT that is now invalid or we just need to get a new one from our cookie. We are going to get our refresh token and we will set this in a second. Don't worry if you're kind of confused what's going on. We are basically getting the refresh token from the cookie. And then we're going to go into the user list for a user. We're going to check the token associated to that user and check the one that we're getting from our cookie and make sure that they are valid so that we then are authorized to give a new JWT to that person. And then within the JWT, we are also going to hand a new refresh token to this user. But as you can see here, we're getting a red squiggly for X token on a user object. That's because we haven't adjusted our user model to having a refresh token. So let's go do that. So if you open up your user model, we are going to basically add in everything that we got from the refresh token. We are going to have a token associated to a user, the token created and token expires attached to the user. But why do we need these fields here? Well, like I was saying earlier, whenever you give someone a token or an access token, whenever they sign in, that's going to be associated now in their cookie. But whenever they're going to do a request or even ask for new tokens, we need to check if the token is actually active and attached to an active and valid user. So that then we feel confident either giving them the resources that they need or giving them new access tokens. So that's why we need to have this because we do need to keep track of that. And like I was saying earlier in the video, sometimes if you have a really big project that maybe goes and talks to a lot of different APIs or different things, and there's a lot of tokens, you might want to have a separate table that keeps, you know, a connection between users and all their given tokens that they might have at one time. So now coming back to the auth controller, before I make changes to this JWT generator method, which there are changes to be made, I'm going to come down here right after our refresh token method, and I'm going to add another set method. This method is basically going to be the one that actually sets our refresh token in our cookie like we were doing with the JWT. So what goes on in here, this is going to be called set refresh token. We're going to pass in a refresh token object and the user object, and then we're going to go to our HTTP context response, the cookies. The cookies in the response to the client request, obviously, and we're going to set X refresh token and we're going to pass in the token and set all the cookie options. So we're going to set the expires the same as the refresh tokens. So obviously they're in sync. You wouldn't want to have different ones. And then you want to set it to HTTP only because it is an HTTP only cookie and we're setting in the refresh token into the cookie. And then we go down here and like I was saying earlier, Whenever you have a refresh token, you want to tie it to a user. So here we are just updating all the values uh, in our, you know, mock user database. And that is what we're doing in here. And now since I broke out kind of the refresh token part where it assigns it to the cookie, I wanted to kind of do the same thing for the JWT so that it's not just kind of stuck up here within this JWT generator method so we can actually make it a little bit more reusable. So we're going to move all that code into its own method called set JWT. Basically, we're just going to pass in the encryptor token or the string uh, JWT token value. And like the refresh token, like we did the refresh token, we are going to set it to X access token. And that's going to be set in the cookie. Now we're going to pass in the string and then we're going to set all the same cookie options. And the difference, though, is I'm going to set the expires to a shorter amount of time than the refresh token. So refresh token was seven days. This is going to be 15 minutes or whatever shorter amount of time. But you want to make sure that the JWT obviously has a shorter lifespan than the refresh token. If not, nothing that I said at the beginning of this video makes any remote sense. So just keep an eye on that. And since we changed the name of the token to now X access token, don't forget to go back to your program and where you actually extract the JWT from the cookie, change it from token to X access token, and now you're good. So now continuing on the next method that we're going to have, this is going to be a revoke token method. What is this method going to be used for? Well, this method is going to be for the specific time where maybe you tried to sign in, you tried to access a resource, but your JWT is now invalid. So then you try and then go use your refresh token to get another JWT. But then for some reason, 
the refresh token is corrupted or it fails or the given user account doesn't have one well this method would be called as kind of the last resort and then basically we would go to the user we would delete whatever token could possibly be there and then once we return from this the front end would reroute to your login page and make the user kind of restart and sign in again so this is kind of the last method that would be called by a front end whenever you are using refresh tokens because if you guys don't kind of understand, I guess, the workflow of how using refresh tokens works, it's basically, okay, so you log in, you get a JWT, you get your refresh token. Now we want to go access things. And that's okay, because you're basically just using your JSON web token. But once that expires, we need to then go use our refresh token. And then we want to go hit our refresh token method, because we want to refresh the JWT that we have. But if for some reason this doesn't work, we go back to the front end with an unauthorized. So then at that point, we're like, well, we've tried to access, we tried to refresh, neither of those work. Well, it seems like we need to have the user just re-log in again. So we're going to revoke and clear out whatever token they might have had, uh, you know, attached to that user and ask them to re-sign in. And now everything's good. And we start off kind of from the point. So that's kind of the, the cycle that happens on the front end. But I'm not really focusing on that since this is kind of an API focused video. But I do want to paint the picture of that's kind of how a real world application will work. That's kind of the ebb and flow of how the front end and the back end are going to work when it comes to refresh tokens and making sure that you always have a valid JSON web token. So now that we've created all our other methods that we needed in the auth controller, we can now go back to the JWT generator method and change this up to add in the new code that we need. So in here previously, all we were doing was creating a new JWT and then adding it to the cookie as the token. But now this is going to change in a pretty solid way because we want to make use of kind of all these methods that I also kind of broke out the set JWT and the set refresh token. So this is going to change. So the first things first is I'm going to, instead of having this HTTP context response cookies append token, we're going to change that to just set JWT and we're going to pass in the encryptor token. Next thing is we're going to make good use of the generate refresh token and we're going to pass that in and we're going to get the refresh token that this method gives us because we're creating a new refresh token. And then we're going to pass it in to set refresh token along with the user object that we get in this method right here. And what is now happening in here? Well, whenever we call this method, what are we doing? When you want to get a new JSON web token, you have to make sure that they also get a new refresh token because it was probably used to access it or you're logging in for the first time and you now need a refresh token. So whenever we go in here and set the JSON web token in the cookie, as we do um, right down here, we also want to go through and give them a new refresh token. And that's why we end up calling right here. And then we end up setting the user object in our user table in our database with the new token credentials. Or second, let's give you the other pathway that you can hit this method. And that is through the refresh token method, where from the cookie, we extract our refresh token. We check, do we have valid tokens? Cool. Now let's generate a new JWT. And like I mentioned earlier, whenever I was kind of explaining refresh tokens to you guys, I said that if you, you know, try and get a new JWT, it's also good to get a new refresh token. So we are doing both of those things right here. So now let's actually test the application so I can show you guys how the refresh tokens work in action. But if you found this video helpful so far, please drop a like on this video so I can spread the more developers on YouTube. Thank you. Okay, so now with my API running, let's test everything and I have my front end running as well. So we can just go ahead and make sure that all of this is working as I say it is. Uh, so let's first open up our register method because since we are using a user list with nothing in it and every time I run the API, obviously it clears out, we need to create a new a new user. We need to register myself. So what we're going to do here is we're going to throw myself in here, execute. Uh, I should be registered now. So I'm going to add in a breakpoint here as well for logging in. And I have a few other breakpoints. We should be good to go. Let me also put one here. Let's go back here. We are now registered. Now let's go back to my front end and let's sign in. So my super secret password. Login. Cool. So we have gone in with our model, our super secret password password and my username. We able to find my user. We were able to find my user within the user list and now going all the way down. Everything was a match. Passwords were good. Now let's generate our new token. So that's all going to be working well. As you can see, we got our JWT here. We are going to set it in the cookie right here. Our access token is where we are setting our cookie. Everything is good there. Step forward, we are now going to be generating a new refresh token because it's the first time and we don't have one yet 
for our user because we're just logging in for the first time. So that is happening. We are getting a refresh token here. As you can see, we got the string and the two dates, and then we're passing in our user to the set refresh token method. The one that if you guys remember is the one that is right here in this method. And then we are setting everything. We are setting our cookies. So our cookies have been set here, refresh token. It expires the same date as hopefully the refresh token does. Uh, and then we are just setting, you know, inside of our user, we are setting the token and we are setting the dates so that we have the record of what token was assigned to this user. And then we're going to step all the way through. And now we are logged in. So now let's go check the background. Let's go check our cookies. If we go to application and open our cookies and scroll down, we can see here that we have our refresh token and our access token. And that is being passed in correctly. And now let's say, oh, for some reason, our JWT has expired. Well, I have this button here, and this one's just basically going to mock, let's say, what the front end would do if we had an expired token. We would go and hit our generate new token method. So we would go and then hit this refresh token method because we would want to get a new JWT. Or if both of these options fail, you know, regularly hitting whatever endpoint and us having a valid JWT, or we try and refresh our JWT, but for some reason our refresh token isn't working, we would then kind of simulate and go back to try and log in the user at that point. But this way, we want to go and try and get a new access token. And how do we do that? Well, we get a new token. And whenever we try and refresh this token, we're going to go into the cookie and we're going to get our refresh token, which is this XI5J, which as you guys remember, if I go to my inspect, is this one right here. And then we're going to go to our user list and we should find a user with the same refresh token. You can see right here in our user model, we have the exact same refresh token. So we should be able to assign a brand new JWT to, you know, our application. And we're going to go through and we're just going to go through again, JWT generator, go all the way through. So now after this runs, we should be able to go here and we see that our refresh token has changed and our JWT has also changed. And if you want to confirm that our JWT is changing, we can go here, we can open up this we can see that we have this JWT right here. And if I go get a new token and step all the way through, and we now go back here, we should see that we have a new refresh token again and a new JWT. And now we go here and now check this new object. So we see these numbers right here. Well, they changed because it's a new one. And that is how you implement refresh tokens within your application. And obviously, I hope you guys uh, were able to understand kind of how I explained how the front end of this side would work uh, because it does work very close in tandem with how refresh tokens work and when you need to call these given methods. But that is how you use refresh tokens with JWT and HTTP only cookies in a .NET API. And if you enjoyed this video, but don't really understand too well why I use HTTP only cookies instead of just storing my tokens in local storage, well, watch this video next.